Hello and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shadeva Roberts. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with what's happening here on this channel. And if you already subscribed, thank you so much for tuning in again today. So this woman to woman series, today's session, I want to call all my single ladies. I'm calling all the single ladies today. And I just want to share with you some things that, you know, looking back on life, I wish someone had shared with me. I want to share with you some things that I believe are dear to the heart of God um, and I believe will help you on your journey. But as I said, I, I believe these are things that, you know, would, would benefit us, you know, in, on our, in our single journey, in our singleness, you know, so that we are um, uh, shifting our mindsets and that we're focused on God and that we're thinking of, you know, ourselves the way that he thinks of us. So we're going to get into this, you know, today, and I'm going to share these things with you. And I just pray that they are a blessing to you on your journey. But before we get into it, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless you and praise you today. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness, Lord God. I decrease, Lord God, right now that you might increase, Lord God. Speak the words that you have, Lord God, to speak, Lord God, to these women today. May they hear your heart, Lord God. May they hear your voice, Lord. And in these words, may they see your face, Lord God. So I just pray, Lord God, that you minister, Lord God, and shift minds and mindsets, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I ask and pray. We pray, Lord God. Amen. Amen. So as I said, you know, I'm going to get into a few things. Actually, it's going to be five things that I want us to take away today. I want you to take away today as single women. And I believe these things will just help your paradigm. You know, as I said, I believe that they're going to be a blessing to you and that you begin to shift your focus in new directions in your singleness. Hallelujah. Number one, the first one is this. God loves you. And you might be thinking this, oh, that's so simple, you know, you know, how is that going to help shift my paradigm? Let me get into it, you know, uh, for you, I'm going to break that down. First John chapter three, verse one, New International Version says, see what great love the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. And I just, I know for me personally, I really wish I knew and had a full understanding of what it meant to know God's love. And if that isn't, you know, um, enough for you, or if you don't see that as a need in your life, then that's the reason for me sharing these words today. You need to know that God loves you. You need to know, not just have a head knowledge of it, but you need to be in touch with God's love. You need to be rooted in his love. You need to let his love fill you up and build you up. Hallelujah. His love is not shaky. His love is not, you know, here today and gone tomorrow. He's the same. He's consistent. You can depend on his love toward you. And I believe that would just shift your entire life. I know it would have mattered to me to just know and to be rooted in God's love for me you know one of the the, the desires um or, or the drivers in relationships a lot of times is our desire for love to receive love we connect with people because we're looking for love and a lot of times we look for it in the wrong places hallelujah and so as we know god's love we truly believe in that and we know that he accepted us first that he loved us first it should really shift our perspective about ourselves it should really help us as we're going you know, into relationships. For one, his love will make us whole. So, you know, we go from just going into relationships looking to get love or for someone to complete us or fulfill us. But we go into relationships whole as a whole individual. We take our whole selves into relationships. And I believe relationships as a result will be so much better. Hallelujah. Because you're not getting into relationships looking for somebody, you know, uh, to, to meet all your needs and, and to fulfill all your, your, your all your issues and all your voids and, and to mend all your brokenness and all your pain. But God can do all of that in his love for you. And when you receive his love and you're filled with his love, it makes all the difference in this life. It makes all the diff difference in your single journey. You know, it makes all the difference should you step into relationships. Hallelujah. Then you're not trying to get something from someone that, that is this is already reserved for God. That's reserved for him first. And then you have an understanding and that understanding that God loves you so much and that he loved you first. You didn't have to perform for him. 
that he just he just loves you. He created you. He knows you and he sees you. That will shift your mind. Hallelujah. That will heal your heart and any brokenness that there is there. And you will be full as an individual because of God's love. Hallelujah. So I pray that this one really speaks to your heart and that you consider that, you know, um, if you've received God's love, or are you, you know, seeking relationship if you are in your singleness for someone to complete you or for you to find love? God wants you to know his love in fullness and completeness first. And I tell you, it will make so much of a difference when you're going into relationship because you're rooted in the solid foundation of his love. Hallelujah. And you can be a better person. You can go into relationships willing to serve and be a whole individual because you've received God's love. Hallelujah. Number two, and I believe one and two go hand in hand. You are accepted. You are accepted. You are accepted. Romans chapter 11, verse 1 through 2, New International Version says, I asked them, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know that scripture says in the passage, what, what scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he appealed to God against Israel and it goes on. But the part we need to take from this word is he does not reject those whom he foreknew. Who does he foreknew? Who did he foreknew? All of us. He, he knew us all. He created us all with purpose before the foundation of the earth. He accepted us before we accepted him. He accepted us. You're already accepted in God. You are already accepted. Hallelujah. He, he foreknew you, so he already accepted you. When you didn't even choose him, when you were living, you know, uh, in, doing your own thing and going your own way, God already accepted you. He already had open arms towards you for you to run to him and be loved and be accepted. Hallelujah. So when we draw near to him, we get an understanding of what this acceptance looks like. Hallelujah. And, and, and what love that is, you know, how much more. Do we receive love when we know that we're accepted by an individual? And that's what God is saying. I love you and I accept you, you know? Um, and so a lot of times when we're, we're, we're sing, single, you know, we think that someone saying that they want to marry us means that they accept us. That's our form of acceptance. Oh, because I got the ring. I'm accepted, you know? Or if you've been in a relationship, you know, um, or someone rejects you. OK, and then your world just comes crashing down because of the rejection. What is that pointing to? The fact that you don't you're not rooted in acceptance. You're not rooted in the fact that God accepts you. So it doesn't matter who rejects you. You're still accepted. You're still loved and you are still accepted for just who you are. Hallelujah. You don't have to earn that from God. He is a free gift. It's just yours. You're chosen by him. You're loved by him. You're accepted by him. He already has a plan for you. So it doesn't matter what relationships don't work out or what happens in this life with people. God is saying, you can always fall back on me. So your life doesn't have to be hopeless, you know, because it didn't work out over here or because it's not working out with this one or because someone rejects you. Hallelujah. He has accepted you. You know, and why does this happen? Because we place our confidence in men. We place our confidence in, in people. Instead of placing our confidence in the God who already accepted us. So stop running. Stop running behind folks. Stop running behind folks who have rejected you. They don't answer your phone calls. They stop sending, you know, sending text messages. You know, they don't reply to what you're saying. You got to chase them down. Stop running after people. Stop chasing folks down. Hallelujah. Receive that rejection as God's redirection. Hallelujah. He's redirecting you back to him, to the place where you can meet that deepest need of acceptance in him. Hallelujah. He doesn't will for you to do that, for you to live that way where you always just exasperate yourself, try to chase somebody down. You got to know where they at, what they doing, what's going on. You know, it just received the rejection. Hallelujah. God is saying, if you come to me, I'll make you whole. I'll fill you up. I'm going to bless you to where, you know, that, that, that stuff will just roll off your shoulders. 
it won't even bother you. It won't even hurt you anymore because you know that you are rooted and you are accepted in me. Hallelujah. So just receive, take heed to the rejection. Some, some of you need to receive that. You need to take heed to the rejection. Okay, you don't want me. That's fine. I go on with my life. I still have hope. I still have a purpose because I'm rooted in God. Hallelujah. So we got to get to that place. Number three, you are worth it. Say it with me. I'm worth it. You are worth it. You are worth it. You're worth more. Hallelujah. Don't settle for less than God's best for you. Don't settle for less than, 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 than standards you know you should. You are worth it. Luke chapter 12, 6 through 7, New International Version says, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You're worth more. God says you're worth more to him. You are worth more to him. If, if you just only understood your worth, it will make a world of a difference in your life. If you understood your worth, let me just be real with you right here. If you understood your worth, you wouldn't be sleeping around with this one and sleeping around with that one. You wouldn't be in this bed and that bed and that situation and the other. And I know, you know, in society today, a lot of women feel like that gives them control. But if you if you understand the word of God, you know that you can't sleep around. You you know that, you know, the word of God says you become one with, with whomever you sleep with. Whoever you have intercourse with, that person you become one with. So you, you're actually not one. You're not in control. You, you're you not building confidence here. You're actually losing little piece of, pieces of you. Little pieces of you are scattered out, you know, with all those different individuals. So you're not gaining confidence by any means. That's a trick of the enemy. Hallelujah. What you're doing is damaging your soul. And God wants you to know that you're worth it. You're worth more. Hallelujah. You know, so... so once we have an understanding that we're worth it to him, you know, once you have a picture in your mind that God is your father, he's your daddy, that he sees you and he knows what you're doing. He, 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 he's looking at you. He's looking at you in a good way. He has his eyes on you. He knows what he has for you out in the future. He knows because you're worth it, there's more for you than where you are, what you're doing, or situations that you may be in. And he's saying, you're worth more than that. I numbered the hairs on your head. I know you. Every intricate part of your being, I know you. You're one in a million to me, but you set up for being in a situation where you're one in a number. You're not the only one. And that's where you stuck at. And God is saying, no, but you, you are one in a million to me. There's not another one like you. You can't be replaced. You are worth it. You are worth it more you know you're in an on again off again relationship you just wanted the number in this relationship and god is saying you but you you have to end it you got to take steps towards confidence and boldness in god you got to receive this when you receive that word that you're worth it you stop selling yourself short hallelujah you'll stop bouncing around to this one and to that one when you understand your worth in god when you understand your father is watching you he sees you and you're precious to him. He wants you to remain precious in his sight. Hallelujah. And this is not about somebody who has a past. That's okay. Even if you do have a past, you're still precious to God. You can begin again. You can start over. You can start in a new place today. You know, devoting yourself to him because you're worth it. Saving yourself for the one who cares, for the one who's dedicated to you. Hallelujah. You're precious to God. Hallelujah. So, you know, God is saying, you know, this, he don't even notice you. He don't notice you when you walking by, <laughs> you know, you call, you call, you, tr you know, you racing behind him and trying to follow him, trying to do this and do that. And God said, you have all of my attention. You have all of my attention. All of heaven stands up when you wake up in the morning. Hallelujah. You are royalty. You are the daughter of a king. And God wants you to know that, you know. I don't know about you, but these things would have made so much of a difference to me. Hallelujah. These are the things that I needed to ruminate on. These are the things that, that you need to turn over in your heart and in your mind. Hallelujah. Knowing that you're worth more. Hallelujah. God says you're worth more to him, you know, than, than, than anything. 
than anything. He, all of his children, you know, he created and each one is precious to him. Not a single one of us is not precious. Not a single one of us does he not delight in each detail of our lives. He knows us and our coming and our going. When we lay down, when we raise up, rise up in the morning, he sees us. He's involved in your life in ways that you couldn't even imagine. And he just wants you to know that you are worth it, girl. You are worth it. You are worth more than any situation you could ever settle for. Hallelujah. So keep praying and keep believing God to send his best to you. Hallelujah. Keep praying and believing God to send you something that mirrors um, uh, his perception of you. Hallelujah. That you, that, he, that you run into the person, hallelujah, who values you for who you are and all that God created you to be. Hallelujah. That you don't have to shrink back or lessen yourself to fit into that person's space, that you can just let your hair down and be you. Hallelujah. That's what he wants for you. He wants you to know that you're worth more and get out of situations that are only degrading you more. Hallelujah. You are blessed. You are loved. Hallelujah. Number four, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Psalm 139, 14. New International Version says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Whose works are we talking about, guys? What works are we talking about? You. You are the work, hallelujah, that he's done. That is wonderful. You are beautiful. And sometimes we just need to tell ourselves that, you know, you need to stand up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, girl, you look good. You know, you, 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 you are awesome. You're beautiful. You're intelligent. Hallelujah. You're wonderfully made. You're beautiful. You need to see yourself differently. You know, I just, it's so common among women to, to the first thing we do when we look in the mirror is to see everything that's wrong. My nose is too big. You know, my, my butt is too flat. You know, my hips too wide, you know, my breast too big, whatever it is, whatever it is you think of yourself, throw all of that stuff away. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You need to speak to yourself the way that God would speak to you. He would say, daughter, I created you from your toenails, hallelujah, to your eyelashes. I created you. Every part of you is beautiful to me. I didn't make a mistake when I created you. Your shape, your curves, or lack thereof, it's all my doing. So you got to fall in love with you. God is saying, stop trying to be like them. You know, stop trying to follow this cookie cutter, you know, uh, 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 ideal that, you know, the world tells you you have to fit into. Just be who I've called you to be. Be who I've created you to be. It's beautiful to me. When you walk in the fullness of all that you are, it is a sweet smell to God. Hallelujah. He looks at you and says, girl, stop shrinking back. Stop being less of who you are to fit into other people's space. Stop comparing yourself to other people. You don't have to fix your hair just the way that she does or wear the clothes that she wears. What's in you? What have I placed in you? What are your desires? What about yourself can you love more? Hallelujah. You are beautiful. Hallelujah. So, you know, there's not, you have to remember that there's not another one like you anywhere in this world and they never will, there never will be. You are one in a million. God created you unique an individual as he did all of us. You're an individual. Hallelujah. And you are beautiful. He did not make any mistakes. So it doesn't matter if you don't like your feet or somebody says something about your hair or says something about your skin tone or whatever. You're beautiful to God and he didn't make a mistake. And he wants to use all of who you are for his glory. But what gives him the most glory is that you look in the mirror and you're proud of what you see. You're proud of the person that you are. You're proud of what God has done in your life. You're proud. You don't look down on yourself. You're not spending all your time and all your money and all your resources to be different. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about self-improvement. That's good. Go to the gym. Work out. Take care of yourself. You want to fix your hair up and make yourself look nice. That's great. All of us do that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you trying to reinvent the wheel every day, every season of your life, every hardship, every broken situation you go through. You feeling like you got to become a new person because of it. And God is saying you need to remain who you are. You are the gift that I want to give to this world. 
you just the way you are. Hallelujah. You are beautiful just as you are. Your voice and your talents and your gifts and your mindset, the way you think, every little thing about you was created by God. Hallelujah. So we want to give him glory. We want to give him glory by accepting that and loving that and appreciating that and honoring him by saying, God, I just thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for me. Hallelujah. Because I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am beautiful just the way I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I even want to add to this, this part before I move on to the last, the last point. If you come out of relationships and you know you've had a, 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 a broken relationship or a bad breakup or something of that nature, one thing single women tend to do a lot of is compare. You compare yourself to the old girlfriend. You compare yourself to the new girlfriend. You know, you 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 compare yourself and you're thinking about what is this one going to want? And how should I look for this one? And how should I be for that? You know, what should I be doing to catch this one? All those. And God is saying, no, stop. I need you to throw all of that out. Kill that. To get, get rid of all of it. That's not what I want you to do. I want you every single day to lead with you, your authentic self. Hallelujah. Who you are. Is there someone out there who matches perfectly with every single thing that you are? Hallelujah. And as long as you stay in the way of faith, as long as you stay before God and let God do it and you don't try to do it yourself, he'll bring you into the right place that you need to be in. He'll bring you into the right relationship, the right situation for you. Well, you don't have to lessen yourself or be less of an individual, hallelujah, or shrink back in order to be loved and to be accepted. Why? Because you already know that you have all of that in him. Hallelujah. And just on and can to continue on the subject of just knowing that you're beautiful and knowing that you're worth it. Hallelujah. As God has said, we're precious to him. We're precious in his sight. And we got to be mindful of that. So this message is not for the 22 year old only. This is not for, you know, just for the, a young woman or a young single. This is for the 42, the 52, 62 year old woman. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. You have a relationship with God. Sometimes you get a little bit lonely. You know, you, you, you leave your door open for someone to come in every now and then. You know, you got a relationship with God, but sometimes you just get lonely. You want someone to just come in and be there. And God wants you to know still that you're beautiful and that you're worth it. You're worth more. Hallelujah. And he wants you to shut those doors and open yourself more fully to him. Let him fulfill you. Let him meet your needs. Don't make an idol out of these relationships. Don't make an idol out of your loneliness. God is saying he'll be closer to you than a friend. He'll be closer to you than any relationship you could ever have in this life. If you would just let him in in that way. And he knows the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. And as you stay faithful and walk faithfully before him, I believe that he will fulfill those desires according to his will. Hallelujah. So get rid of the counterfeits and wait on God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last point. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. When you stand to your feet in the morning, declare that over yourself. You are blessed. There's so much in your life that you have that you can be thankful for. There's so you know many blessings in your life that you may just take for granted every day. And if you remember the fact that you're blessed, hallelujah, in your singleness, remember that you're blessed. Hallelujah. The woman who has a husband, the woman who has children is not more blessed than you. You are blessed. Hallelujah. And you have to know that you're blessed. You're blessed in this time and in this season of your life. Use it for the glory of God. Ask him, how does he want you to move about in this season? What would he have you to do? How can you serve him more faithfully in this season? But just know that you are blessed. When you come out, you're blessed. When you go in, you're blessed. Wherever you are, you are blessed. I believe God takes delight in that. When we're reminded of his goodness towards him, I believe it pleases his heart. So declare that over yourself. Know that you are the prize. Hallelujah. If God brings you into a new relationship, you are the prize. You are the gift. Hallelujah. Not just in a romantic relationship with friends or whoever it is. 
Hallelujah. Favor is connected to your life. In the name of Jesus, when people get next to you, when they come alongside you or they want to befriend you or be in relationship they, with you, they're being blessed. They're being elevated. Hallelujah. You got to declare that over yourself. You are a blessed woman of God. Hallelujah. Your life, everything about you is blessed. So get that mindset and just continue to walk in that. Continue to walk in that. That will be a blessing to you. That will shift your paradigm. That will shift your focus each day. That you're blessed. Hallelujah. You don't have to focus on what everybody else has and what you think you should be doing or where you think you should be. Just rest in this moment. Rest in the life that you have right now, what God has you planted right now in your singleness and be blessed in it and find ways to be a blessing to others in this particular season of your life. Hallelujah. So just remember that, you know, and as I said, you know, just 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 know that there's a there's a blessing for each season of our lives. God is preparing us for each season. Whatever he has for you in this season, just don't waste it. Don't waste this season, you know, losing more of yourself, gaining more of this world, you know, uh, building up heartache for yourself, you know, adding baggage to your life. Don't use this season for that. But use it, you know, for the glory of God. Be effective in this season of singleness for the glory of God. Seek him and ask him, you know, what would he have you to do? What what person would he have you to be right now? Hallelujah. What what do you need to be working on in this season? Hallelujah. What 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 areas of service will he put you right now in the season of singleness? Just line yourself up with him. Get before him. You know, submit yourself to him. Submit this season of life to him. And let him bless you in it and recognize that you are blessed in it. Hallelujah. Singleness is, is not a curse. And it doesn't mean that you'll be single always if you're desiring to be married and, you know, those kinds of things. Pray and trust in God. Let him lead the way. But just know that you are blessed. Hallelujah. So as a recap, you are loved. You are accepted. You are worth it. You are beautiful and you are blessed. Let nothing and no one take that away from you. Hallelujah. Always be reminded of that in all of your relationships, not just in romantic relationships, but friendships and your family, you know, relationships or whatever. Hallelujah. You are blessed. Hallelujah. All of who you are. Is who you bring to the table in relationships. And God wants you to be a full, a healthy, and whole individual with a godly mindset. Hallelujah. And thinking in the ways of righteousness and in truth. He wants you to know all that he says about you. And he wants you to walk in that. Hallelujah. So, so, so stop downgrading yourself to appease people. Be all of who God says you are. And don't apologize for it. Hallelujah. Don't apologize for it. Get in with him. As I said, get direction from him for what he has for you in this season. And I just want you to take note of, journal it, watch him as he elevates you because of this knowledge that you gain. You know, that you recognize and own everything that he says about you, who you truly are in him. When you own that, just watch God elevate you. And you need to take note of it. Hallelujah. That this season of your life isn't wasted. And it's not going to be wasted. Should you choose to submit yourself to him. And recognize these things about yourself. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Most Gracious Father. We bless you Lord. We thank you Lord God for this word. We thank you Lord God that you choose to speak to us Lord. You're with us in every season of our lives. You prepare us for every season. You have a blessing for us in every season. You want to use us in some way in every season of our lives. Nothing in you is wasted, God. So I just pray, Lord God, for these women, Lord God, as they hear my voice today, that they, Lord God, would just look past me, Lord God, and hear you. Hallelujah. Though I'm speaking, Lord God, for you, I pray, Lord God, that they will hear the Father's heart. That they will hear you say that they're loved. That they will hear you say that they're accepted. That they're worth it. That they're blessed. Hallelujah, Lord God. And that they will live their lives in a way that is pleasing and acceptable unto you. 
that they not make idols out of relationships or the hoped for relationships, God, but they would submit themselves fully to you, trusting you in every season, Lord God, that whatever they need, you shall supply, you will add it to them, God, as they stay before you, as they stay committed to you and submitted to you, Lord God. So bless them now. I pray that this strengthens someone, Lord God. Hallelujah, that they've never heard these words before. They've never heard someone say that they were beautiful. They've never heard someone say that they were worth it or that God loves you and you're accepted. But I just pray that it becomes real to them, Lord. Not just words, Lord God, that it become real to them, that they actually feel your presence and feel your love and feel your warmth and know acceptance in you, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, that it will be the thing that changes them forever. Hallelujah. So we just lift it all up to you today. And we thank you, Lord, that you're going to make good on your word. We trust in you. We believe in you. We hope in you, Lord God. So bless this time. Bless this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I just pray that this word was a blessing to you. Hallelujah. That you stand on what God says about you and let that become your truth. That is the truth for you. Not don't live out your own truth, but live out the truth of what God says about you. Hallelujah. And that boldness and then that confidence that comes with you knowing that you are loved. With you coming, you know, with come, come that comes with you knowing that you're accepted. Hallelujah, that you're beautiful, that you're worth it, and that you are blessed. Hallelujah. And as you do that, as you receive that, God is going to usher you into, you know, uh, uh, the right places. He's going to send the right people. Hallelujah. He's going to usher you into the right relationships that he has for you. Hallelujah. And they're all going to be for his glory. Hallelujah. So step into that, you know, walk in there, be blessed and be encouraged. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.